Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs War Room Update. We are on day number 164 of Israel's war with the Hamas terrorists in the Gaza Strip. It started on the 7th of October with the massacre of over 1,200 people and the kidnapping of 240 people. 134 of those terrorists remain in, of those uh, hostages remain in Gaza today. The terrorists, on the other hand, have taken substantial hits. Over 12,000 of the terrorists have already been killed. If not more than that, many others have been neutralized. And uh, um, the war is continuing on with full uh, force in the Gaza Strip, all over the Gaza Strip. It started in the north and uh, um, progressed down further south. They're now, uh, the idea forces are really concentrating in the area of Hanunas, waiting to start the next part of the operation, moving down into Rafah, into Rafiah, um, which uh, uh, just this morning, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu, at the opening of the cabinet minister of, of the cabinet meeting, promised that there would be a ground operation in Rafiah, in Rafah, to make sure that we eliminate all of the Hamas terrorists and free the hostages and prevent Gaza from ever being or ever posing a danger to Israel again. Um, what we saw also um, just in the last 24 hours is the 250th Israeli IDF forces uh, um, casualty from the, uh, the ground operations in the, in, the, in the Gaza Strip. It's a number which everyone predicted would be so much higher um, than, it, than, it, than it actually is. Um, IDF forces operating thoroughly defensively but aggressively throughout uh, uh, the region. What we're going to discuss today with my guest there, with Yoni Ben Menachem, who really is a, 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 a veteran journalist and an expert on Arab affairs, is the operation that took place this morning in the Al Shifa Hospital in uh, the Gaza Strip. The Al Shifa Hospital, you'll remember, is located in the northern Gaza Strip. It was the subject of much discussion back then in November when IDF forces first entered the hospital on the understanding that hostages had been taken into the, into the hospital, had been held in the hospital, and that terrorists were operating from their headquarters, which they had placed underneath um, the hospital. Now, for a long time, the IDF forces haven't been operating in the Gaza Strip, uh, in the northern Gaza Strip, and that area has become um, a little bit more um, of an area in which Hamas has, according to reports, returned to operate. And that was really the focus of the operation this morning. Um, Hamas seems to have thought that since Israel had moved for, further south, its leadership could return to the, to the northern Gaza Strip and again hide out in the Al-Shifa hospital under the assumption that maybe that IDF forces wouldn't be willing to re-enter the hospital. Um, so that's something which uh, has proved to be wrong um, for the Hamas terrorists. And it would appear that many senior Hamas terrorists have been arrested in that compound, over 80, uh, um, based on the last report that we saw, um, different names being suggested, but nothing really being um, confirmed for the meantime. So we won't add to speculation on that front. Um, but Yoni, tell us, give us a little bit of a background as to how is it that the IDF is again required to operate in the north. What's been going on in the meantime? Why did Hamas think that they could even possibly return to the Al Shifa hospital, to the scene of their crime, um, and 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 seek refuge there? Well, let's start with the situation on the ground now. The the military operation that started uh, very early this morning is still going on. And it might last uh, even a few days. I don't know uh, what the uh, results of this uh, operation will be. It looks like it was a surprise uh, attack by the IDF, and apparently they have some success. Uh, but uh, the IDF uh, spokesperson in, in Arabic, in the Arabic language, he asked uh, all the residents, the Palestinian uh, res residents in this area in Rimal and around the Shifa hospital to leave the area and to go south uh, towards the uh, El Mawasi area near Hanunes. Uh, uh, this is an indication that the army uh, apparently has 
more military activities in this area, not only in the, in the Shifa hospital itself, but also uh, in the areas surrounding it, maybe in the tunnels. I don't know what developed uh, as a result from the arrests, uh, as you mentioned, uh, in the hospital of terrorists and the interrogations by the Shin Bet. Maybe they gave information, sensitive information. The IDF wants to take advantage of it and use it to make more arrests. And so uh, it's still going on. This is the bottom line. And uh, as I said, we don't know how long it will take. It might uh, end uh, today. It might continue tomorrow and even the day after tomorrow. It all depends on the uh, intelligence information. So as we see, what you asked why why uh, the, the army uh, carried out this uh, operation. Uh, well, uh, apparently, uh, uh, as we saw uh, in the recent weeks, there is uh, a lot of improvement uh, in the uh, intelligence that uh, the uh, Shin Bet and the uh, military intelligence are having uh, from different sources and also uh, uh, mostly from uh, uh, terrorists who are being arrested uh, in different areas in Gaza and in their interrogations, they just spill out all the information. This, thanks to this information, uh, Israel was very successful in uh, assassinating uh, number three of the uh, military uh, leadership of Hamas, Marwan Issa, who is uh, uh, nick nicknamed the, the chief of staff of Hamas, uh, is the one who, who planned the 7th of October attack uh, the massacre, and he is the one who commanded uh, directly the attack on Be Kibbutz Be'eri. He was personally involved, according to uh, what the Israeli intelligence knows, he was personally uh, guiding and directing the attack on uh, Kibbutz Be'eri. So uh, that's really, so a, that's really a, a huge success for the IDF to be able to take out one of those, really that one of the top four we've discussed before, the top right. four uh, um, Hamas um, uh, uh, terrorists in the Gaza Strip, uh, um, Yechi Sinwar, Muhammad Def, and Muhammad Sinwar, his brother, and uh, and uh, and and Marwanisa, right? Right. And uh, another, uh, maybe smaller success is that uh, with him, with Marwanisa, another uh, senior commander of the military wing was also killed, which is Ra uh, Razi Abu Tama, uh, who is the commander of the uh, refugee camps in the center of Gaza. He was also uh, in the tunnel with Marwan Issa, and both of them uh, got killed as a result of the uh, of the Israeli uh, Air Force bombardment. Uh, so this uh, was very accurate attack by Israel, very successful. And as I told you, the uh, Israeli intelligence is improving. And uh, in, the, in the last few days, the IDF had uh, very good information uh, that uh, the uh, terrorists are regrouping in Shifa Hospital. Uh, I'm not just talking about armed uh, terrorists or Nuhba terrorists, but talking about a few seniors uh, in the military wing and maybe even in the political wing. We cannot go into the names, it's obvious. Uh, and uh, the, the information said that they are regrouping in order to, to start carrying out attacks. Uh, why, why did they go back to Shifa Hospital? They thought that they have immunity now. And that uh, as a result of the IDF withdrawal from uh, the north of Gaza uh, for uh, uh, reasons of uh, releasing the, the people who were serving in reserves, uh, and they thought that they have the immunity there, they are safe there, and they uh, plan to uh, uh, go uh, set up a new headquarters under the Shifa hospital, and from there to carry out attacks in the north of Gaza. This is to prove to try to prove to uh, the people of Gaza and to Israel that they are still in the area, that they're controlling and are not willing to uh, raise uh, the white flag. Uh, so this was their intention. So, as I said, the IDF had the intelligence about that uh, uh, planning. And uh, early this morning, around the two or three in the morning, um, uh, the IDF raided uh, Shifa Hospital compound and, for, and it's still working there now, and arrested uh, over 80 terrorists. Among them, apparently, there are some senior names. We cannot go into it now because it's under censorship, and also uh, uh, they are being interrogated, and uh, I don't think that the IDF wants the, the Palestinians, the Hamas, the, to know that they are arrested. 
So it looks like a successful operation. And uh, from what I hear from the military, there will be further raids by the IDF in different areas uh, in, uh, in the Gaza Strip. You have to understand, uh, my friend Morris, that uh, uh, because of the American pressure and because uh, uh, of what is going on with the humanitarian aid and because of the uh, uh, five months of fighting, the IDF had to release uh, a lot of soldiers, reverses, reservists uh, from duty. And uh, we now have, it's not a secret what, what I'm going to say because it was published, uh, so it's not under censorship. We have about three to four brigades only operating in Gaza Street. As a result uh, of uh, what I said, and uh, Hamas, of course, they know the uh, the situation on the ground, also follow, following very closely the Israeli media. So they, under, they estimate now that because of the military pressure, because of the international pressure on Israel, because of the talks uh, on the hostage deal in, in Qatar and uh, because of the internal disputes in Israel, in the war cabinet, the demonstrations of the uh, families of the hostages, the, the demonstration, the political demonstration the, that are renewed now in, in Tel Aviv uh, every Saturday against the Netanyahu government, they think that this is the right time for them to try and operate again. And, and they come out of the from the tunnels and trying to regroup and resume the terror activities. This is what is going on on the ground. And that they choose to do again, Yoni, from from a hospital. They that it seems that they 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 are unwilling to even accept that there are some places that are off limits for the terrorist activities, specifically hospitals, which they seem to to abuse over and over and over again. That. Uh, it, it, it makes that connection between what they're doing with the hospitals and their, their really the, their ability to control the, the humanitarian aid that's coming into the Gaza Strip, whether via the UN organizations or via their own terrorists that we've seen on, uh, um, on, the, on, on the trucks of the UN organizations. Um, to what extent, Yoni, are they is Hamas still capable of openly operating in the Gaza Strip? We saw reports that they'd, uh, um, that they'd put out some of their civilian policemen, as it were, civilian policemen in the northern areas of the Gaza Strip to, to, to really to bring about a little bit of order, as they called it. Um, how much are they operating? To what extent is, is their force still, still present in the Gaza Strip? And, and, and to what extent are they able to to cater to the needs of the the population in the north, in the north there seems to be some two to three hundred thousand people who have remained there, right? Right, you're absolutely right. Before I get into that, just to tell you that this, uh, as you talked about, the hospitals being used as a, a headquarters of terrorism. Uh, so what is happening in Shifa Hospital is, is I think it's a sign of warning to Hamas. Uh, because I think the, the next operation might be in Nasser Hospital in Khan Yunis also, because they're also using other hospitals other than Shifa, uh, like uh, Nasser Hospital in Khan Yunis, uh, as a headquarters, headquarters of terrorism. So they might go there even uh, to try to operate from there. So I think the army is trying to tell Hamas, look, we know your plans, we know, you know, we know what you're doing, and we are not going to sit quietly and going to kill all the terrorists that are hiding in hospitals. As for uh, what you asked, uh, according to the estimation of the IDF, in the north of Gaza, there are still uh, around 9,000 terrorists, still. Uh, I'm talking about uh, 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 terrorists that belong to the military arm, the military wing of Hamas, Izzedin al Qassam. They are hiding in the tunnels, and when they see that the army is not there, they're coming out of the tunnels, they put on civilian clothes, and they are uh, uh, operating uh, as civilians on the ground. Just for that, um, Yoni, just for, for a minute, just excuse me interrupting, just to give our audience a little bit of a, a, a background on that. Um, at the start of the war, Israel estimated that the Hamas force numbered some 40,000 terrorists. Of them, over, over half have already been neutralized, either killed or injured or captured. That leaves really a very substantial amount, 
somewhere in the region of 10 to, to 15,000 terrorists still capable, able-bodied, who are still fighting in the Gaza Strip. Now, some of those terrorists are the ones that you refer to, Yoni, some of that 9,000? Uh, yes. Uh, as for the numbers, the Prime Minister Netanyahu, last week in an interview to one of the foreign channels, he uh, said uh, on, on camera that 13,000 uh, Hamas terrorists were killed uh, by the IDF. Uh, and uh, there are uh, like uh, 20,000 injured, according to estimations, but there are still terrorists. As I, and I said the last, the last estimation of the IDF is that in the north of Gaza, there are 9,000 terrorists still operating. Now, um, about what is happening, uh, the IDF uh, is, is fighting now uh, against the uh, military wing of uh, Hamas, uh, and dismantled 18 uh, battalions out of 24 battalions that are on the ground, that were on the ground. There are two battalions, two more battalions in uh, refugee camps in the center of Gaza, Der El Balah and Nusayrat, and there are four other battalions uh, in uh, Rafah area. Uh, these six battalions have to be dismantled by the IDF. It will happen soon in a, in a few weeks, and then the whole uh, 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 military structure of Hamas will be dismantled. But the problem is what is happening on the ground because we have also a civilian infrastructure of Hamas. And the army uh, didn't have time uh, yet to, to take care of this uh, civilian infrastructure. What, what, do, what do we mean when we say uh, civilian infrastructure? We're talking about uh, uh, municipalities. We're talking about... Uh, uh, different uh, 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 ministries of uh, of the government of Hamas in Gaza, health, education, uh, 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 and so on. And we have like uh, a few, like twenty to thirty thousand uh, uh, employees in the uh, uh, civil uh, infrastructure of Hamas. Israel has to take care of them because if we don't do that, we will not be able to topple. The Hamas rule in uh, in Gaza, it's not only uh, to kill the terrorists uh, that are carrying weapons. There are other uh, 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 civilian infrastructure that has to be taken of, care of. It's, it's, it's without question that, that, that there is so much more to Hamas than just its military wing, the terrorists, whether it be the Nukba or the other uh, 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 terrorist forces. But how does that affect Israel's ability to to really control the Gaza Strip. If you have all of these, uh, as it were, civilian Hamas terrorists wandering around constantly, presenting themselves as as as, as the authorities in, in, in the Gaza Strip, which is really what they're doing. Um, how do we get to that position where we're able to say that Hamas governance in the Gaza Strip has now ended? Is it something that we're just going to have to live with forever, Yoni? No. It's up to us. I think it's up to us. Everything is up to us. It's it's important to what we do, not to, to wait for others to do for us. It, we have to take the initiative. We have to take the initiative and take care after, look, what is happening in the few last weeks because of the American pressure and international pressure and whatever, is that the IDF uh, is hard, hardly fighting in Gaza. The, the main fighting uh, arena is in uh, Khan Yunis. Uh, and uh, the the activity of the IDF is slowed down. This is a mistake. The IDF has to resume the momentum of the fighting, uh, uh, take care of Rafah area, uh, occupy the two uh, refugee camps in the center of Gaza, the uh, Nusayrat and Dir el-Balah, and, and then we will have control all over the Gaza Strip. Once we have this uh, full control all, all of the area of the Gaza Strip, then we can start handling uh, the civilian infrastructure of Hamas. This is a long process, but in a few months, we'll be able to do that. But we have to first to finish with the military aspects of the fighting, which is not, uh, the problem is uh, mainly Rafa. If I, if I remember correct, correctly, Yoni, uh, the IDF has, has almost not operated at all in both in, either in Nusirat or in Deir el-Balakh. That's a, it's, it's areas where the population predominantly stayed in place um, and, and and even grew. And, and and to date, there haven't been, apart from 
specific surgical operations, um, wide scale operations there. Where do you think we need to now put the, 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 the thrust of the pressure? Is it southwards towards Rafah and the Philadelphia corridor um, bordering with Egypt or more to the camps of the central area? If we're seeing the terrorists now moving back to the north, it means that also our control in the north seems to be the, the perception that, it, that, that, it's, that it's less strong there, that it's less clear there. Where, where do we go next? And, 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 and what would be your recommendation for the IDF? Well, you know, uh, they are moving underground. They are moving through the tunnels. They are coming from the south to the north. And once the IDF goes into the north, they are running away through the tunnels back to the south. So the tunnels are the main problem that we're dealing with. Um, as for your questions, I would recommend uh, to operate in uh, in Rafah, in the south first, uh, for two uh, major reasons. One reason is that uh, it became a symbol. Uh, uh, and they are trying, the, uh, Hamas is trying to, uh, uh, to present it that Rafah is a symbol of resistance to Israel and the uh, uh, the Israel will not be able to operate and occupy it, and they will put uh, pressure on Israel, and they will condition it in the uh, uh, in the talks uh, of the hostages deal in uh, in Qatar. This is going to uh, raise in the negotiation. They are going to demand Israel not to go into Rafah, and so on. So we have to do that. This is the first reason. The second reason is that we have to take care of the, uh, to take over the uh, uh, Philadelphia corridor, because this is the corridor where all the weapons is still coming in from uh, uh, from Egypt. And also, this is a route for escape for the leaders of Hamas. If we do not seal it, if we do not close it, then they will be able to uh, uh, run away through these tunnels in the, uh, under Philadelphia corridor to, to Egypt, to Sinai, and then, it will be very difficult to kill them. So uh, this is why I think we should concentrate on Rafah. Once we occupy Rafah, I think the picture will change completely. And really close that southern border. Uh, I, I think some of the discussion that we're hearing, um, again, uh, um, around, uh, the, 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 there's a lot of news going on and a lot of reports, some of them unconfirmed, would, would, would possibly even suggest that there is free movement from uh, um uh, um, Egypt into the Gaza Strip as well, possibly, um, but that's something that still needs to be discussed. And and this all coming to what extent, Yoni? Do you think yesterday uh, the IDF uh, uh, reported that they destroyed a tunnel that was 2.5 kilometers long, and then connecting the southern Gaza Strip to the northern Gaza Strip? Do you think that that that, that movement, that constant uh, uh, um, operations, that's generating more and more intelligence? Do you think that that's one of the, the contributing factors to uh, um, the operation in El Shifa? Do you think that, where, where do you think that that intelligence came from? I think the, this intelligence came from, uh, mostly from interrogation uh, of the uh, terrorists that were captured by the IDF during mili uh, different military operations in Gaza in the last few days. Uh, and also, as I said, uh, it looks like that uh, Shin Bet has improved its capability of uh, uh, bringing uh, in a new intelligence uh, as a result from different actions on the ground, because now we are inside Gaza, so it's easier to get uh, intelligence than uh, the situation that we were in uh, before October 7th, we were out of Gaza on the border. Now we are inside Gaza, so it is easier for the Shin Bet to collect the information. Uh, so we cannot go into, the, of course, the, the methods and the tactics of how we do that, but it's easier and the information is coming in. You saw we, we had very good information, accurate info, information about the whereabouts of Marwan Isa, and we uh, succeeded in, in killing him. So uh, it's only a matter of time till we get to Ihya Sinwar and Muhammad Dev and Muhammad Sinwar, all this gang. I think they know that uh, they are living, uh, they are not going to live for long because the IDF is not going to give up. They're going to chase them and kill them. So so on, on that on, on that subject, uh, Ioni, to to what extent, and, and I know we've discussed this before, but but it, it, it's important to 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 I think uh, um, to 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 readdress the subject. 
the, the, the talks going on and there seem to be even developments, uh, even in the last 24 hours for the release of hostages, to what extent do you see the ability of Israel to get to a complete release of the hostages, um, all of them, to the last one, uh, um, as, as, as a result of negotiations? What I've seen, the last report that I saw is that they seem to be throwing out the number of releasing 40 hostages in return for six weeks of stopping fighting and the IDF uh, um, then uh, um, even even after that, not continuing on um, with the, the war effort. Give us a little bit of an insight as to as to what our capabilities are to release all of the hostages via negotiation. In my opinion, and this is my personal estimation, of course, nobody has to accept that. You can argue with it. But as far as I know, Hamas, they will never release all the Israeli hostages that they are holding, even if Israel release all the terrorists in the jails in Israel. And even if Israel withdraw from Gaza, they will always keep some of the hostages as a, a, a guarantee, as a, as a policy, as a as a insurance policy, life insurance, life insurance that Israel will not assassinate them. So, um, I'm very pessimistic about what is going on. I also think that this round of talks in Doha, uh, now that uh, the Israeli delegation is going there today, uh, headed by the head of the Mossad, uh, David Barnea. Uh, I think that uh, Hamas, uh, and I also hear it from the Israeli Shin Bet. Uh, they are just uh, trying uh, to delay this uh, 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 deal uh, to gain more time because the estimation is that uh, because it is Ramadan and uh, because it is the, the there is a lot of American pressure on Israel that the President Biden changed his mind and he wants now to stop the war uh, and uh, they see the internal disputes inside Israel so they think that uh, uh, they can gain time and uh, drag the negotiations. And this way, uh, Israel will not be able to go uh, into Rafah and occupy the whole area and also occupy a uh, Philadelphia corridor. This is this is their main concern, uh, that this area will not be occupied by the IDF. So they are uh, stalling for time. They're trying to gain time, hoping that uh, while they're doing that, uh, President Biden will find a way to make Israel stop the war. I think this is the old tactics. I don't think that they really mean business. It, it seems, Yoni, that, uh, again, connecting Doha and, and the United States in, it seems that this idea of building the floating port for Gaza and, and thereafter a proper port for Gaza seems to be putting a tremendous amount of stress on the humanitarian situation of the Palestinians, but it isn't being used at all as, or it would appear not to be used at all, as leverage to bring about the, the release of the hostages. To what extent is that is that really the, the upgrade of the, the, the ability to provide aid to the Palestinians be part of that equation at all? Or is it something which is being done and carried out completely unconnected to uh, the humanitarian concerns and needs of the Israeli hostages as well? This is the main problem since the beginning of the war that President Biden, he took the whole uh, subject of humanitarian aid out of the equation. And uh, now they took it, taking it into their own hands with this uh, uh, pier that are uh, building in, uh, in uh, north of Gaza. That means that they are depriving Israel from leverage on Hamas. So the only way, the only uh, leverage that we have now is the military leverage. But also, they are trying, the Americans are trying to stop us also from occupying Rafah and uh, occupying the uh, Nusayrat and Dir al Balah refugee camps in the center of Gaza. Uh, this way, we will not be able to win the war. We will not be able to achieve the goals of the, the operation. The IDF is fighting for five months uh, and had a lot of success. And now, this military, this uh, international pressure, and especially American pressure, is uh, is uh, is changing the situation on the ground, uh, so I expect the political echelon uh, to do something about it and really quick. We have to change the strategy, and even if 
it will bring a collision between uh, Israeli government and the American administration. We have no choice. We have to finish the occupying all of Gaza. And we don't have a lot. We just have Rafah and we have the uh, two refugee camps in the center of Gaza. I think what you said now, Yoni, is pretty much an, an, an atom bomb falling on us. That the, that the U.S. is playing into this narrative of the terrorists in order to bring about the halt to the war. I think that's that's something which not all of our audience have seen or or, or heard about. It, it's this idea that that Israel has been causing, as they say, a, a, a far too extensive civilian casualties as opposed to the terrorists who have been killed. Um, and, and really playing into that whole false narrative. How is it that the US is in that position? And, and why are they asking us to, to stop fighting against this genocidal force? There is an internal contradiction, you know, in this American policy because uh, President Biden is a great friend of Israel and has been saying all along since the beginning of the war that he's supporting Israel's right to uh, destroy Hamas because this is a, a terrorist organization. And I also think that he knows that if he wants to uh, uh, fulfill his uh, two-state solution idea, uh, then the Hamas cannot be a partner. There will be no state solution, two-state solution uh, uh, if Hamas is on the ground in Gaza. He knows that. But apparently, what is happening is the uh, the elections, the presidential elections, and the situation, political situation of President Biden, uh, is affecting what is happening, uh, and it's changing its policy now because apparently there's a lot of uh, uh, criticism in the United States about President Biden policy uh, from the Democratic Party, and also is looking at the uh, public opinion polls and he sees his rival. Uh, Ex-President Donald Trump rising in the uh, in the polls, so he wants to improve his political situation, and this makes him change the policy towards Israel. But it will culminate in a, in a, in a, in a, um, uh, I don't want to say a defeat, but it will bring uh, the IDF into a situation that it will not be able to win the war, and the war will be only longer and longer. So I think that. President Biden should just give the green light to Israel to occupy Rafah and, and get it over with uh, in order to stabilize the situation in the Gaza Strip. Yoni, do you see Hamas uh, uh, um, surrendering? Do you see them ever giving up their ability to uh, um, govern or their desire to govern? Um, we saw just uh, the other day um, criticism by Hamas of the decision to appoint a new Palestinian prime minister, um, that they still seem to think and they still believe that they're going to survive to live another day. Is this the result, you think, of... I, I understand that they see this as the internal uh, um, division within Israel, but do you think it's the American position that's, that's bolstering them, that, that that's really giving them a tremendous amount of hope? Right. There are two things that are bolstering them. One, the American position. The second thing is that they are so sure of themselves that they are holding the hostages in a very uh, secret place that the IDF will never be able to get to them. And also that Ikhya Sinwar and the gang surrounding him are in a very secret place that the IDF will have a lot of trouble, trouble uh, killing them. So this gives them the uh, self-confidence, the self-assurances that they can play the game and they, they will stay in power. So... What is needed here, and I think what happened to Marwan Issa is a good sign, that Israel can get to the, the intelligence, get the information, and get to uh, Sinwar and his gang, and also get to the hostages, and this will change dramatically the situation on the ground. But So in our, in our discussions with, the, uh, um, with the, the Biden administration, do you think that really reason seems to, be, uh, seems to have lost out um, in in the battle of the internal elections there that that means that for the next seven eight months we're going to be in this situation where we have a hostile u.s administration um constantly hindering our ability to to really finish the job and get rid of hamas you're absolutely right this is why i think it's imperative for the political echelon in israel to have a quick operation in rafah uh, even though the Americans are objecting it 
objecting it 100% just to move the forces towards Rafah, uh, not even occupy all of the city, just put them under siege in Rafah, surrounding the area, have a military presence in that area. This will change the, the picture. This will give the Americans uh, uh, the, the, the feeling that the IDF has to do these things what, which are essential for the continuation of the war. And this will uh, ch change the atmosphere and then make the Americans understand that we cannot give it up. We have to occupy Rafa. This has to be done as soon as possible. And I expect the prime minister and the uh, war cabinet to take this decision and do it. Don't wait. So what Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu said today at the opening of the of the cabinet minister meeting is that the, the cabinet had already approved the operational uh, uh, um, plans of the IDF to go into Rafah um, and that, that with some other preconditions that, 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 that were set out. Um, and that would seem that that is going to be something which we will potentially um, see in the near future. As, uh, uh, connecting all these different, uh, or trying to connect um, these different dots, Yoni, what, what position do you think that Qatar has in this whole, uh, uh, um, in this whole mosaic? On the one hand, as you said, uh, uh, um, they, 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 they've played a substantial role, said in the past, in, in, in financing Hamas. They are part of that Muslim Brotherhood, but they seem to be playing this double role of a negotiator also in um, for the release of, of, of the hostages. Um, uh, Dedi Barnea, David Barnea, going off to Doha again uh, um, today to discuss um, further negotiations ab about the release of the hostages. Should they be brought into the idea of building the port in Gaza? Would that be a good idea, bad idea? <laughs> it's going to be a very, very bad idea. We don't, we never learn the lesson, you know. Uh, Hamas and Qatar are the same thing. Uh, there's no difference between Qatar and uh, and Hamas. Because once, when whenever I hear in the media uh, many reports saying that Qatar is going to put pressure on Hamas, I laugh. Because uh, they are going to put pressure on themselves, I asked myself. They are going to put pressure themselves. They are Hamas. Qatar is Hamas. Qatar, Qatar leadership is the Muslim Brotherhood. They are Hamas. They are playing a double game. They are not only supporting uh, uh, Hamas and Muslim Brotherhood, supporting also Hezbollah in Iran. Uh, so we have to be very careful. Once this war is over, and we hopefully we'll get all the hostages back. We have to cut all ties with Qatar. This is my recommendation to political echelon. We, sh we made a big mistake when we allowed them to go into Gaza, to, to have a foothold in Gaza, and we should never do this again. Qatar is a very dangerous uh, country for Israel. They are the enemy. They are Hamas. Qatar seems to be uh, uh, really throwing around a lot of political weight um, and, 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 and are making themselves almost... A, a kingmakers as part of this discussion, and and it seems that there doesn't uh, uh, um, that there isn't any other substantial player that can step up. Uh, uh, um, Abdel Fattah Sisi, Egypt, hasn't seemed to have stepped up to assume what had previously been a central position in these negotiations. Does he not have any power, any leverage over Hamas, um, or or is he just not interested in 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 taking up that position? No, he has a lot of uh, leverage on Hamas. He has the biggest leverage, which is the Rafah crossing. This is the only way Hamas can get out of Gaza, uh, travel abroad through Egypt. So he has a lot of leverage on Hamas. Uh, 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 Gaza Strip is the backyard of Egypt, and the Gaza people are dependent on Egypt on, on everything. Uh, the problem is Israel. Israel, from the beginning of, uh, of the crisis, the beginning of the war, uh, they allowed uh, Qatar to go into the picture in order to negotiate for the uh, uh, release of the hostages. This is the, the big mistake. We shouldn't have agreed for that. This was a big mistake. And I think once this whole thing is over, we'll just have to kick out uh, Qatar and never allow them back again in our life. This is a very dangerous country. Maybe, and maybe, uh, maybe it's something uh, that we shouldn't wait until the end of, uh, of of the war for. Maybe it's something that already now we should, uh, like Waze says to you when you're hitting a traffic dam, we should recalculate yeah. our route um, and, 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 and possibly find uh, um, more productive uh, uh, um, 
interlocutors, uh, interlocutors than, 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 than someone who is so destructive. Let me give you a small uh, example, if I may, uh, Maurice. Just look who is advising them. Azmi Pshara, you know, member of ex-member of Knesset, Azmi Pshara, who is uh, wanted by the Israeli Shin Bet for spying, for Hezbollah. He's a, 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 an advisor for the ruler of Qatar. And now, the, according to report in Le Figaro newspaper in France two days ago, he's the one now that is helping uh, Qatar in the negotiations for the hostages. He is giving them advices to them and the Hamas how to make problems for Israel. So, so, just, so, so just for our audience, uh, uh, just to fill in that little gap, Azmi Bashara was an it, it, it was it is an Israeli Arab. Um, he was actually a member of the Knesset of Israel's Parliament, and in two thousand and six, he was spying for Hezbollah during uh, um, the, the Second Lebanon War, um, and really used his parliamentary immunity at the first stage um, to get away from a arrest, and then fled the country, um, and and has been living. Uh, um, in, uh, uh, in in exile, as it were, um, for the last uh, um, 18 years, continuing in his support for Iran, for Hezbollah, continuing in his advice as to how to bring about, really having come from the Israeli political system and deep within that political system, using his abilities, capabilities and connections in order to keep on uh, advising all of these different players as to how to bring about um, the destruction of Israel. Uh, is, is that a correct dis description, uh, Yoni? Absolutely right. Absolutely right. 100% correct. So this is, you see, this is an example of what Qatar is. They're just trying to destroy Israel very cleverly, very sophisticatedly, and we have to be aware of that. And uh, as I said, this was a mistake from the beginning when Israel allowed Qatar to go into the picture of negotiating with Hamas. Uh, Yoni, uh, 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 as usual, unfortunately, our time has run out. Um, one positive message before we leave. I repeat what I always say to you uh, and to our viewers. Everything is in our hands. We have to be determined. And if we will be determined and united, we will win the war. It's up to us. Everything is in our hands, in the hands of the political echelon. But it has to be a, a determined and united to win the war. And uh, a, a, indeed, on that note, let's just hope that, as you said, uh, and as Prime Minister Netanyahu said this morning, the uh, operation in uh, Rafah will start soon and will uh, uh, go by quickly, uh, successfully, and with uh, as few uh, um, casualties to uh, the IDF forces and to the hostages as possible, and that Within a, a, a weeks, we'll be able to already report that the hostages have been freed, that Hamas has been, uh, uh, Hamas leadership and operatives have been uh, uh, killed, and that we are now able to start moving uh, um, on with the rehabilitation of Gaza and really preventing any type of similar events as the 7th of October ever happening again. Yoni, thank you for uh, uh, joining us again um, and, for you your, for uh, uh, and for your insights. Um, we will be back with you again um, on Wednesday. Um, until then, keep safe, everyone. And uh, uh, we hope to see you again. Thank you very much. Thank you.